Hello, so in today's video I'm actually going to recap what I did yesterday because it turned out there were some issues with the audio, so the, the main microphone was actually off. So today nothing new but the good old stuff of installing a proper Python environment. Um, before starting to share my screen I just wanted to mention that I usually prefer to do this in a quick rather than a from the scratch way. So. I'm not going to show you how to install one by one every like foundational package like GDAL and others, but I will show you the quickest way I found to be working and the quickest way that has, has been serving me very well during the past few years on how to get a complete geospatial data science Python workspace setup. So let me share my screen in one second. All right, so we are back with the screen recording and let me show you the usual way I install my geospatial Python libraries. So I usually go for the library called OSMNX and I know that it's not kind of the most standard or, or most popular geospatial library in the sense that it is building on many other libraries. Nevertheless, it's probably my favorite geospatial library because the way it combines Network X and OpenStreetMap and the API of OpenStreetMap is just really cool and makes it really easy to get data from OSM. And we are thankful for that for Jeff Brewing. So going back to OSM and X, um, here you will see an installation command which I will uh, run just in a second. So the great thing about this is that Mr. Brewing has already done great work on collecting all the dependencies of OSMNX, which includes loads of other geospatial libraries. So once we manage to set up OSMNX, usually we are good to go. We won't really face any dependency issues from that point. So how do we do that? First, we will need a terminal. Let me just open a new tab here. So on Linux and Mac, it looks exactly the same. And on Windows, I think it's very similar. Maybe it's called different. Probably it's called command line. But anyway, so we have this terminal or command line open, and here we can just start installing the libraries by creating a new virtual environment. This environment is kind of like a box or a separate computer where you can dedicate it, install dedicated packages which, which will only be available in that specific environment. So we can do that by just calling the conduct create command and we can specify the name of uh, of the workspace. For example, I will call this YouTube, but you can call it whatever you want, really. Here in the example, it was called OX. And then we will use the Condor Forge, which is kind of a crowdsourced effort to package together all sorts of libraries and Python packages. And we need to set a few things here. And then we will just name the package we want to install. It is going to be OSMNX, but I found it much more practical to also add Jupyter, which is the programming interface where we can write our Python scripts and we can also run it in a browser very easily. And by the way, Jupyter stands for Julia, Python, and R. So let's see what happens if we run this command. Okay, start it to run. It might take a few minutes, so if it's taking too long, then you can just go outside and get a coffee. In theory, very soon it is going to ask us some very, very crucial questions, whether we want to move on with the installation, but... All right, so it's running. Let me just have some coffee. Yep, so see, these are the packages that we are going to install with that one single comment. Let's just type Y and hit enter and see what happens. <coughs> yep, so if I was better at video editing, I would probably just cut here, but now at least you are getting kind of the real feel of how this installation happens. All right, it should be done very soon. <clears throat> In the meantime, let me just, oh. 
Never mind. So it's done already. That's pretty cool. So what we can do next is we can activate this environment. I don't even need to type it because it's here. So just copy and paste. And let's see which Python version do we have here. We can get it by typing Python minus minus version. As you can see here, we have a Python version 3.12.4, which is probably the latest supported, supported release. So now we are one step ahead. Next, and maybe I just minimize myself now. Um, I would like to, uh, you to install the Anaconda Navigator. I already have it installed, so I'm not installing it again because that might mess things up, but it should be very simple following these steps here. So let me know if you have any issues with the installation of the navigator, and if so, then I'm happy to jump on it and maybe create a new video covering that. But now let's assume that we installed it, and what we have is, voila, the Anaconda navigator, which, um, well, as you see, it has a couple of tabs from which we will need the one called environments. And here I have a few ones that I created before and here is the one called YouTube. So that's actually the environment we just created. So I just clicked on it to select it. Now it's very busy selecting the environment. And hopefully in a few long or hardly silent seconds, it will be loaded. Yep, it's here. So after, after we selected it, just click on this arrow and open with Jupyter Notebook. And now it's going to open a browsing tab, a browser tab somewhere. Okay, it's not, yeah, it's here. So it's coming here. So this is what you should be able to, what should be, what you should, sorry. <laughs> so what you should see on the screen, first time it's on, it might take a little longer until it finds itself because it's loading all the dependencies. Okay, let's, let's try it again because something seems to be stuck. Yeah. Okay, so now yeah, it opened on my other screen, so just one sec. And I'm showing it here to you. In truly just one sec, okay. Yep, so this is something like an opening screen. Now this is a random folder. Spoiler alert, this is actually the final folder of my upcoming book, which you will probably hear about next week and week after and weeks and years after. So anyway, so once you open a new Jupyter Notebook environment, then you will be greeted by a file browser where you can, for instance, click on the new button where you can create a new Python notebook. It's gonna come in a pop-up window, so just allow it to happen. And we can even call it test or whatever you want. So now we have a nice brand new Jupyter Notebook in a freshly created environment, which in theory is great for geospatial libraries. So let's tr test it by importing OS7X first. That was our core installation library, so this should be working flawlessly. Again, first time setup, first time import. It might take a little longer, but we are very patient here today, so let's see what happens. After that, I will import GeoPandas as GPD. And I will actually print the version of the GeoPandas library. So once we are done here, we will see what we have. And the reason I'm going for GeoPandas is that on the one hand, it's kind of the core library we are going to use for all sorts of vector data manipulation. And also in many of my projects, I've been using an earlier version, not the latest one, which is version 1.0.1, .1, if I'm right. And to be able to use my previous code snippets, I will need to downgrade the version a little bit. Mm. 
but it shouldn't be a big issue and it gives us the, the opportunity to learn how to do that and how to install new packages and how to change current packages library versions in Python all at once. Yep, so importing is done, GeoPandas happened in a blink of an eye afterwards and as you can see I have the latest version which is great but not, a, not that great that I would like to keep it so I just import the system library and the way we can use this system library to install packages this is actually calling a command line terminal in the background more or less and I just tell it to pip install and GeoPandas and the version should be 0.14.4 that's kind of my favorite don't add spaces here collecting and installed so now we need to restart the kernel I don't even need OSMNX for now just GeoPandas and see what happens here okay so we have the new version installed okay we can check if everything else in, is in place we can import numpy we can import random we can import math we can import date time and a bunch of other built-in libraries um, but what oftentimes breaks on my computer if something is not set up correctly is matplotlib but now it works as well and if you need any other libraries then you can use this command very easily so just copy paste and install let's say geopy if you want to do some geocoding for that we need to import system because I need a kernel restart we can install geopy we can install let's see pydeck And we can even install specific versions of these libraries. For example, there is ContextLi, which is cool for using or creating base maps. Here I want to use or install 1.1.0. Then I can quickly install that and I can double check these installations, import PyDAC, import GeoPy, import ContextLi, and get the version of it so this way we can install whatever library we want just uh, checking my notes maybe one more library that is that can be useful it is called session info let me just copy again the installation part it's called session info and let's just import session info, info and it has a function or or method called show which will show the session info surprisingly which if you just click on this um, little arrow here will tell you the exact version of every library you have and later on you can use this to write out or save into a, a requirements text file or just share it with your friends or colleagues on slack or email or whatever so that to make sure that you are all using the same versions of different libraries here you can see the installed libraries the notebook environment that's kind of what you see here and also the python version and also when this happened and what is the operation system you're running so that's kind of that's kind of it for today and thanks thanks again for joining here so i hope that you will have great success and you will be able to install as many python environments as you want to and let me know how it works and how it goes and which were the favorite parts of yours in this video see you next time bye